we're gonna build a speaker out of pipes. And it's not even funny how easy it is to build this thing. Look at this. You just slide the pipes into one another until you get this pipe looking thingy. I might be wrong, but if you're from the US, you use those white drain pipes that uh, you have to glue together. But here in Eastern Europe, you just slide the pipes into one another and that rubber washer makes a perfect seal. Anyway, the pipes I'm using are 3 inches and 2 inches in size and that should be standard anywhere. The fact that you will have a harder time fitting them together is not my problem. Now, is this a main build? Well, yeah, however, this doesn't mean that we're not going to try to make it sound as best as it can. So, not just cool looking, but sounding good is in close second as a priority. Anyway, just off the top of my head, here are some potential problems I was fearing. Number one, air leakage. Do these rubber washers do what they're supposed to do? Well, I'm happy to announce that there is no air leakage that I identify. These pipes aren't designed for high pressure water flow, but these speakers are quite small and it seems that the combination just works. Number two, edge diffraction. This speaker has basically no baffle. And worse yet, the one that is present is circular. Why is this bad? Depending on the size of the baffle, some frequencies will suffer from this effect. Since the distance from the sound source to the edge of the baffle is the same on whatever spot you choose, the edge diffraction effect will be reinforced and exaggerated for that particular frequency. Is this a problem? We'll see in the measurements. Number three, the PVC enclosure is not stable and will rattle. This might be true if we were to use two inch pipes like this one, but the factor of the matter is uh, this 2.5 inch speaker doesn't fit and I had to use 3 inch pipes. Definitely not a problem. Number 4. This looks like a transmission line. No way the line is long enough for proper tuning. First of all, I wanted to make a bass reflex, but no matter how small I make the vent at the end, it still looks like a transmission line in the measurements. Regarding the length of the line, quarter wavelength for 77Hz, which is the resonant frequency of the driver, is 1.1 meters. Believe it or not, this line is slightly longer. I'm going to shut up with all the negativity and I'm going straight to build it. And we are basically 85% complete. I don't know where I got that number, but it seems pretty accurate. All you need to do now is drill the holes for the drivers and the holes for the binding posts. Drill a 54mm hole in the cap for the speakers and two 7mm holes for the binding posts. Be careful when you are making these holes as you are holding the cap with your other hand and you might hurt yourself. The drivers go in and you screw them directly to the cap, no pilot holes needed. What concerns the binding posts? The nut doesn't hold it on the other side as the PVC is too thin. However, a good seal is made just by forcing them in. If you have any problems, use some silicone caulk. That's basically it, the speaker is done. 
Now let's look at the frequency response. As we can see, there are resonant modes which are to be expected in the transmission line enclosure. We can do better than that. Just use some polyfill in this section over here and use some towards the end as well. This is the quantity you should place in each of the two sections. Overdoing it will reduce the base output. And judging by the looks of it, we might have overdone it. Now listen, the damping is at your discretion. We established that no damping is bad, as there is this stuff going on over here. But as you put more and more damping material inside the enclosure, you reduce these resonant modes more and more, but you are also getting closer to a response of a sealed box rather than a transmission line. As we can see, the response is linear now, but the base output is reduced by more than 5 decibels. Play with this damping material and do whatever sounds to you best. In my opinion, we should reduce the quantity of the damping material. In this case, I would get rid of the damping material at the end of the line and slightly reduce the quantity of the material you used just below the speaker. In this case, uh, the response is not as linear as we would hope for. However, we don't have those sharp transitions, which is great. Furthermore, the bass output is very good, just slightly lower compared to the old response. For this type of speaker, you don't expect it to be audiophile grade anyway. However, having it hit 50 Hz notes from such a small speaker will surely impress. To continue on this note, let's address the other elephant in the room. The missing top octave. This is a full range speaker, but you can't expect it to perform exactly full range. No worries, most of us can't even hear above 14 kHz anyway. It's a stupid excuse, but regardless, I'm still going to do nothing about it. You know why? Because adding a tweeter will increase the building difficulty tenfold. It's not that it's very difficult to add a tweeter, it's just that without it, it's brain dead simple to build. Okay, fine, I'll add a tweeter and make an MTM. Just so you know, I'm adding the tweeter at an informative level so that people who want it like this can make it like this. I'm still sticking with the full range setup. So here's how you add this thing. Get some 2 inch straight pipe and cut a short piece. The tweeter will go right in without the cap. I used screws only in three places because the surface area is quite small and there is not much the screw can grab on. To fix it between the base drivers, just use some super glue. Next, you have to make a hole somewhere around here to route the tweeter cables inside. Some silicone to patch things up. Then you need a crossover which will look like this. The bottom speaker is actually both base speakers wired in parallel. Find a spot inside the pipe enclosure where to place all of these crossover components and stick them to the box or pipe, whatever. Probably in this spot over here. Good luck with that because I'm not doing it. The results are good, frequency response is much better. If you want the extra hassle, just go ahead. However, I'm going to stick with the Twitterless, lazy approved goodness. I don't know where these speakers will work, but one scenario at a time thinking is on your desk, beside your monitor or laptop. And let's take a measurement in exactly that spot. This time, not an anechoic measurement, but rather at the listening position. This is what happens when you include room reflections in your measurement. You get this mumbo jumbo, which is perfectly normal. If you want to improve how it looks, you need to pay attention to your room treatment and speaker positioning. To give you a comparison, this is the measurement of my studio monitors, and you can clearly see they exhibit the same behavior. The response is better because they have a tweeter and a conventional enclosure, but they are still hot in these two spots, which is the room playing tricks. Anyway, I find it very impressive that these tiny speakers deliver so much bass. Clearly, they are bass heavy and need a tweeter to balance things out. If you are interested in these speakers, my advice is to build them without the tweeter because they are super easy to build. And if you want more, just add the tweeter and the crossover. I'll leave the building plans in the description. But for now, let's do a test listen of these bassy pipes. You can even hear some stuff rattling in my room if you pay attention. Let's go!